Yeah. Think I've got enough. Uh -huh. Right, okay. Think I've got it back, correct. Right. Morning, morning, Lydia. Morning, Butel. Happy Easter. Still Easter. Hey, Donna. We're still very much in the Easter season. Morning, Julianne. We're still very much in the Easter season. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Well, Anna, need to hear you singing, Anna. <laughs> it's the second Sunday of Easter. So we continue very much that theme. In fact, we continue the theme of, of Easter for 50 days. We celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord. Morning, Laura. Celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord. Hi, Marcia. And so we give thanks to God for this opportunity to join together in this celebration. Uh, morning, James, joining us from over in away from the United States. Tara, good to see you. And uh, Roll, it's good to good to see you. Good to know you're here, brother. Good to know you're here. Praise with you folks in in New York and prayers for Bruce and members of his family. May his soul rest in peace. Please pass all my my regards to the brothers and sisters in New York. One of my great <laughs> uh, morning to Margaret. <laughs> This is a different Margaret. Okay. You know, someone said to me that when we have returned to quote unquote normal, that we should continue some kind of, <coughs> excuse me, some kind of interaction or devotion online because it is a Someone reminded me it's an opportunity to share the gospel with a, a wider audience, as it were. Your head keeps on hmm? Your head kind of high. Pull it, pull it. Ah, uh, Chesterfield. Morning, Mary. We're going to... Ah, uh, Donna. Good, good to see you. <laughs> We're going to begin in a few moments' time. I was to get a, um, I was to get a church bell, you know, so that um, we ring the church bell that indicates that we are both to start our devotion. But that may be a bit too much realism. This morning, we are going to sing a hymn. So if you have your hymn book handy, you can pick up the hymn 178. We're going to pick up the hymn. We're going to... Ah, Blessed Roots. Great, great to see you, Elizabeth. Good to see you. We're going to have a hymn this morning, hymn 178. It's a long hymn. It's nine verses, so... We're going to sing the first four verses and then at the end we will sing the rest of the verses. It speaks of the kind of theme that we will be hearing about today that centers around the resurrection appearance to the disciples and especially as it relates to Thomas Mon Andrea, Donna, Nicholas, good to see you. Also to this morning, we're going to have a, a psalm, Psalm 16, 
uh, Psalm 16, if you have your Book of Common Prayer nearby, Psalm 16 is on page 484, page 484, it's the Psalm that we would use, and so again if you have your prayer book handy, you can You can pick that out. You have your prayer book nearby. And that would be great. And we're going to begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Alleluia. Do not doubt, but believe. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Easter Anthem. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he dies, he dies to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For sin by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Let us confess our sins to God and our neighbor. Just hold on one second, please. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are fully sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray, say the Lord's Prayer together. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The collect for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the past could mystically establish the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night, 
and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Very far from us our wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may when night comes rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and love of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversary, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to have our first reading. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. A reading from the Word of God, written in 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. All right, thank you very much. Now we are going to have... We're going to read a psalm, Psalm 16, and I told you earlier to pick out Psalm 16, and I thought I did Psalm 16, and it is on page 484 of the prayer book. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my law. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we will have that hymn, hymn 100 and, 
78, hymn 178, and we will sing the first four verses, and then at the end, we will sing uh, the remaining five, hymn 178. again the gospel reading through the second lesson is from St. John's Gospel chapter 20. St. John's Gospel chapter 20 beginning at verse 19. St. John's Gospel chapter 20 beginning at verse 19. A reading from the Word of God written in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 20 beginning at the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, 
Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. It is basically a Sunday in the, it used to be called the Sunday in the octave of, of Easter, since the theme of Easter continues during the Easter season. There, when we examine church history, there's a number of things that come together today and in the readings for today. A number of things come together today and in the readings for today. Now, first of all, when we examine the colic for today, we realize that the colic for today speaks to us about our baptismal faith. For there was a time when the, the, the colic that we said today was very similar to a colic that would have been said on the Saturday of Easter week. You see, the Saturday of Easter week would have been the Saturday in the octave of the baptism that would have occurred at the Great Vigil of Easter. And so we have persons like St. Cyril of Jerusalem. We have persons like St. Ambrose, who in the week of, of Easter will remind those who were baptized at the Easter Vigil about the undertaking which was theirs by virtue of baptism. And so there's this tremendous link between our Easter faith and our baptism into our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our baptism into his name as we, as we work and minister in his name. And so the, 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 the colleague for today tells us about sharing in the Paschal mystery. It tells us about being reborn into the fellowship of Christ Church. And of course, within the context of liturgical language, whenever we hear about reborn, it is a, it's a fascinating link to our baptism. For we remember Jesus saying to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. You must experience a new birth. And so in our, in our Easter faith, we have experienced a new birth in Christ Jesus. It gives us a new outlook. It, it crushes despair. It says that whatever we may be going through, that God Almighty is always with us, that the resurrected Christ is always with us, even though we may not see him. This is another fascinating aspect of the readings for today. For in the readings for today, we learn that on that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, that's the first Easter day, Jesus came and he appeared to the disciples. And of course, this would have filled them with some trepidation, the, the notion that that, 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 that that strong, powerful, overpowering experience of the presence of their Lord, whom they had seen crucified. That crucified Lord is risen, glorified, present with them. His presence is awesome. But what's fascinating when he appears to them is that he says, Peace be with you. And these words may be familiar to us. We may very well be catching a glimpse of some of the early Christian liturgy. Our Savior says, Peace be with you. And these words are perhaps familiar to us for they form part of the words of the sacred liturgy when we come together. We hear from the sanctuary, the peace of the Lord be always with you. These are not simply the words of the priest, 
These are not simply the words of the text, but this is our risen Lord bidding peace upon us and upon our homes and upon our nations and, and uh, upon the various institutions of, of our land. This is Jesus bringing the glorious and resurrected Christ, bringing the peace that resided within himself upon all of us, that peace that the resurrection brings. And so our Savior says to the disciples, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. And this is something that is fascinating as well. For it says that the glorified body of Christ bears the marks of crucifixion. So even now, while as the epistle to the Hebrews tells us, he lives to make intercession on our behalf. And that we have a God who knows what it is like to be human. We have a God who knows what it is like to suffer. We have a God who knows what it is like to be thirsty and to be hungry. We have a God who, I almost, I almost said, a God who knows what it is like to stand in line in order to purchase items from the supermarket. In other words, he understands the human condition. He knows what we are going through. He understands our condition. He knows what it is like to have to make difficult decisions and how it is for those who have to make difficult and challenging decisions. God Almighty knows what all of that is like. And so he is with all of us. But one of the disciples, Thomas, of one of our, our favorite disciples, Thomas is not there on that first Easter day. And the second Sunday of Easter, today, Thomas is again with them when the assembly meets. Did you get the impression that the assembly will come together on the first day of the week? And note that the days aren't given names. In the Jewish thing, the, the days aren't given names. It's the first day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week. The only day that particularly had a name was the Sabbath day. But the first day of the week, second day of the week, so then the first day of the week. And Jesus appeared then began on the first day of the week. And Thomas is there. And, be, and, be, and without prompting, he says to Thomas, reach out your hand and place it in the, the, my hands, the mark of the nails. Reach out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Do not be faithless, but believing. And you know, the gospel, the author of the gospel according to St. John, he does not tell us that Thomas took this test. But we are told that Thomas said some of the most powerful words in sacred scripture when he said, my Lord and my God. <clears throat> Excuse me, my Lord and my God. When, when Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he's acknowledging that present with them is the God of all glory, the God of all consolation, the creator of the world, because he's bringing together some absolutely fantastic terms here. He's connecting the risen Lord with the God who is the creator of the world, the God of the Old Testament, my Lord and my God. And so, and so for Thomas, and Thomas, a very interesting disciple, who has said earlier to his colleagues, let us go to Jerusalem, even if it means we have to die with him. But what Thomas does for us, for us, for us though, is that he teaches us that in our faith, it is okay to ask questions. It's questions and faith does not deny questions. We can have questions. I, I, doubt and faith are not mutually exclusive terms, but rather doubt and questioning can be catalysts. They can be catalysts to faith. They can propel us onward. They can take us deeper into our faith. Our faith can, can respond to any question that humanity may bring, regardless of the discipline from which we are coming, whether it is, it is, it is natural science or 
is that is anthropology, the whatever, whatever, whatever science, whatever discipline of faith can respond to that query, of faith can respond to that question. And so when we read the Old Testament, we realize that the psalmist always had lots of questions. When you read the Psalms, you always acknowledge the questions. But Thomas became the most, the, as one writer says, the most surest man in Christendom. He became the most surest man, in, the most surest person in Christendom. But you know, sometimes you know, there are challenges of faith. Sometimes you want to know why, sometimes we query what we are going through. And the, the answers are there, you know, the answers are all there. Uh, they're there. We search deep enough, we can find the answers to the questions and so on that we have by dialogue, by conversation, by sharing together, by fellowship, or daily conversation. We can find those answers. And as though to be reading us and reading our situation, the letter. Um, the Apostle letter written by Peter, it is as though today's readings, the, the lectionary readings, are uh, reading our situation. Because of course, you know, it's a time when many questions arise. And in the epistle, in the epistle, the writer, Peter, Peter is telling the Christians who are undergoing a very difficult time that even while they are going through that difficult time, in this you rejoice, even though for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith be more precious than gold, though imperishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Christ Jesus is revealed. So the Christians in the first century are going through a difficult time, but, but Peter is telling them rejoice. At this time in the world, the entire world is caught up in the grip of this healthcare crisis. And sacred scripture tells us on this second Sunday of Easter, rejoice despite what we are going through to find that joy that is deep within our heart. And joy is, of course, one of the fruits of the Spirit. Joy is something that nothing can take away. So let us keep our joy, let us keep good humor, let us, let us keep our fellowship, let us, despite what we are going through, seek always to see our faith shining through. It is indeed a difficult time. This is a time when some of our relatives, persons we know, our loved ones, former schoolmates, um, some have died, some are, some are ill. So it is, it is for me a difficult time. The way in which we normally live our lives, the social interaction, the going around, is not taking place at this time. We are on a 24 hour curfew. We get to go out to make those essential purchases and so on that are so, that are so vital. The message remains to stay at home, stay at home. The message remains to observe the various protocols and so on of our personal hygiene, wash our hands and, and so on. Um, if we have to go out, the message remains to, to wear a mask, protect others, protect ourselves. And we observe all of these protocols within the context and construct of our faith. It does not mean we don't have faith, but God in His wisdom has given us the advice on the, in how to live our lives in such a way that we maintain good health. Remember that good health is a gift from God Almighty. So the Gospel readings and the, the, the readings, the epistle and so on for today, all speak to our situation and context personally. Let us continue to uphold each other in faith. Let us hold that faith. Let us continue during this Easter season within the context of what we are going through, let us, let us keep that faith, keep the light of faith, let us keep our reason, let us keep pressing on, knowing that God Almighty is with us and that we are not alone. Let us keep in contact with each other, 
just call up our friends and neighbors just give them a shout make sure that they're okay because we are one communion and fellowship within the the brotherhood of and our sisterhood of of our of our humanity so may god almighty bless us this day may his grace remain with us and may we continue to uphold each other in prayer we give thanks to god for the sacred readings for today amen let us pray Let's pray for schools and colleges. Oh, eternal God, bless all schools and colleges and universities that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Time of illness. God of goodness and love, in whom we can trust in every hour of need, have mercy on all who are faced with fear and distress, misery and disease. We ask that help may be given to us speedily, and that this emergency may be turned into an opportunity to strengthen the bonds of love and service which bind us together through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, all desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Now before we say the grace, we will have the remainder of the verses of that hymn, the hymn 170. In one seven eight. We're going to begin from verse five. When farmers first the tide insert, how they had seen the risen Lord. He doubted the disciple's word. Alleluia! My pierced side, O farmer, see my hands, my feet, I show to thee, not faithless, but believing me. the hands, the side. Thou art my Lord and God, he cried. Alleluia! How blessed are they who have not seen and yet whose faith has constant been for their eternal life shall win Alleluia. on their 
as most holy day of days to God your hearts and voices raise in lot and jubilee and praise. Alleluia. Now I ask us to thank you very much. Now I ask us to let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Just want to, just want to, thank, thank Ferris, thanks. Just want to thank you once again for joining in this devotion and let me wish you all of the very best. Um, both for the remainder of the day and for the week ahead. If you're celebrating birthday or anniversary or anything remarkable, anniversary of confirmation, anniversary of baptism, wish you all the very best and, and God's this is blessing. Pray God's um, continued guidance on us and all of those who make decisions on our behalf and pray that um, God's protection and his loving grace may always be with us. Um, both at this time and always. So have a wonderful day and have a, a, a good week and look forward to seeing you again, God willing, at the weekend as we continue our Sunday morning devotions. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>